I can't believe it's been almost three years since I studied abroad in Australia on the Great Barrier Reef. I got to do some awesome marine biology research. I also got to snorkel with a ton of tropical fish, turtles, sharks, and even stingrays. I also saw a ton of brilliantly colored corals and some starkly white corals. Now, when most people see white corals, they often get a little sad because they think that that bleached coral is a dead coral. I used to think the same thing, until I did a bit of research into it and learned that's not entirely true. I'm here to explain to you why. Hey guys, my name's Ashley and I'm here to keep you in the know about some of the most talked about and interesting scientific topics. Today we're going to dive into the world of coral reefs to teach you what is a coral, what makes it bleached, and what does it even mean when it's dead. Stay tuned to learn more. First of all, what even is a coral? Corals are actually animals known as polyps. One coral is made out of thousands of polyps, and these polyps have super similar characteristics to some other animals you might know, such as a sea anemone, or if you flip it upside down, a jellyfish. All these animals are really similar because they're all part of the same family. They all have tentacles with stinging cells in them, known as nematocysts, that help capture their prey. Corals can be divided into two categories, known as soft corals and hard corals. Hard corals are unique because they form what's known as a calcium carbonate skeleton. The coral polyp lays down a foundation of calcium carbonate so that it has a cup for the tissues to sit in. Kind of like a human skeleton, this skeleton gives the coral structure, support, and allows these reefs to build on top of each other. At nighttime, coral polyps use their tentacles to catch little plants or animals that float by. However, that doesn't really provide them with most of their food. During the day, they actually use the sun to provide them energy. They have microscopic algae living in their tissues that use photosynthesis to convert carbon dioxide in water into oxygen and sugars. These sugars that are produced by the algae can be given to the coral as a source of energy. These microalgae are known as zooxanthellae, and they are essential when it comes to providing the coral with the food it needs and also giving it the color that they're well known for. We can zoom into the coral tissues to get a closer look at all this. Inside the coral tissues, you can see the layer of nematocysts or stinging cells that help capture the prey at night. And you can also see tons of zooxanthellae. So in order to explain this concept a little better, I actually gave the coral and the zooxanthellae characters. So the coral polyp is named Chloe, and the zooxanthellae is named Zoe. Zoe is able to provide Chloe with food and color, where Chloe provides Zoe a protective home and the nutrients needed for photosynthesis. This is what is known as a mutualism, or symbiotic relationship, because both of the organisms are benefiting from one another. Coral bleaching occurs when Chloe and Zoe's symbiotic relationship can no longer function. A variety of stresses can cause damage in the coral's tissues. We're mostly going to be talking about increased ocean temperatures because that's what's having the greatest impact on coral bleaching. Much like humans, corals have kind of an optimal temperature that they like to function at, which is usually between 23 and 29 degrees Celsius. When ocean temperatures increase, even by a couple degrees Celsius, they can cause significant damage in the photosynthetic process of Zoe. Excess energy is converted into what is known as reactive oxygen species. These reactive oxygen species are unstable molecules that cause damage to Zoe's RNA, DNA, and proteins, and also can cause damage to the coral host cell. Because of these chemicals, Chloe no longer wants Zoe in her tissues, and so she chooses to expel Zoe out. Because Zoe is no longer present, now Chloe has no source of food and doesn't have any color. And that's because coral tissues are actually normally transparent, so you're seeing through the tissues to the calcium carbonate backbone. This stress on the coral does not only cause it to be starving and colorless, but also makes it more susceptible to coral diseases. Sometimes the zooxanthellae can actually return to the coral and it can come back to normal. However, if the heating event or bleaching event is severe and lasts a super long time, then what happens is the coral ends up starving to death and slowly the clear tissues start to rot off the coral until what's only left is the coral backbone. Once the calcium carbonate backbone is exposed and no longer has tissues living on it, then brown algae can come settle on it. And that's when you know a coral really is dead. And that's pretty much what coral bleaching is. So when you see a bleached coral, it might not actually be dead and there could be hope for it. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe below to keep up to date with all my science videos. See you next time.